So what he's doing is he's tensioned everything up, as you see here, and he starts by breaking the wire in half. So he separates the three strands, three on top, three underneath. And what he's going to do is he's going to pass first one strand through, tie it halfway through the wire. And he's going to bring it back. Then he's going to go and take and actually grab two strands next. And what he's doing, he's setting the half the wire. He's setting, like let's say, the left side of the wire. He's setting those strands up first. And then he's going to come back and he's going to start doing the right side, those strands. They, when, we, when we line them up, we actually line them up so they all come into their own wire in succession right down. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's got number two in right now, and now he's going to do the third one. And this is where he actually is going to start start with the um, with the splice we have many different types of wire that um, that we splice and work with here in our shop like I said this is a trawl wire this is a 619 with a fiber core which is a rope core and that helps hold the the center of the wire when they're when they're actually spinning and making the, the product some wires are actually steel core like this one here this is what we call a take a wire. They're much finer strands and they have a steel core inside of them. So, we, so he's at the third strand right now, getting set for the left side. And now he's gonna start setting the left, the left side wires in. So he's gonna do his tucks in succession. He's gonna go and put seven tucks to start on this one wire. Usually we do it seven, seven, six, five, five or five four depending on how the, the splice looks and we do that so you actually taper the strands off sorry about that <laughs> this here is just regular galvanized wire yep stainless wire would look exactly the same most of the time, stainless, though, has a steel core in it. We do a lot of splicing with stainless. Um, we, um, we have the 304 and then 316. 316 would be like on a sailboat. 304 is what we use on our commercial boats here. 304 is usually a lot stronger than, than 316. So now he's setting strand number two. He's, gonna, he's following it down. He's actually twisting the wire in with the other strand, so he's laying it right around the other strand. Another material that we work with, do the same kind of splicing, is what they call combo. This is combination wire and rope. We have we use this in different areas on the trawl itself. So typically today we do a lot of machine splicing with this sort of material, um, but we can also hand splice this as well. Now he's on strand number three. That is the first one he started with at the beginning. And it's already been preset on that side, so he's bringing it around and starting to lay that in. Um, splices on the go was the question this lady had here. Um, we do it all the time, uh, almost on a daily basis, we run down to some of the boats here and we back this truck up and we splice wire. Um, like I said, every, sometimes every couple of trips for some of these scallopers, they wanna freshen their ends just to protect their gear. When you have you know, fishing gear that's worth thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 behind the boat and it's holding on something like this, they wanna make sure that's fresh at all times because there's a lot of times where it parts off if you're not taking care of it. So he's got half the splice done right now. The other half is here, the right side, and the, and the three strands for the right side right here. And now this, the three strands left, he's gonna start tucking each one in on that side.
What he's using to do the splice is, um, is a Marlin spike. We've got all different size Marlin spikes and different designs. We have like real skinny ones here where they're, they're not a big difference between the beginning and the end of the spike. Then we have some that are a little bit fatter, ball easier to work with. Some of these like this type of spike is for mostly for combination material. And they get bigger and bigger. Depends on the size wire that we're working with. Yes? Uh, yeah, we learn from others. I, I, we actually both learn from my father, who probably learned from his father, just kind of traditional, passed down the information. Um, I was, I, I think I started splicing about uh, about 12 years old. I, and my, my, we, we had the gear shop. My father was also a fisherman for over 30 years, or our father, I should say, was a fisherman for over 30 years. And um, when we started the gear shop, we, we did a lot of the, the products for the boats. And that was one of my jobs as a kid was inside the shop to learn how to splice properly. And I would, would do one after another. So Hans is actually going at a pretty slow pace right here, nice easy pace to see what he's doing. But that splice there he could probably do in, I'd say 10, 12 minutes if he was uh, you know, really going at full speed. And of course it takes a little longer for the bigger wires. We were doing some inch and eighth here today. That'd be about not 20 minutes, something like that, 25 minutes maybe.